Hello, I'm Dr. Mikey Mewborn, and this is Leadership Development. Today, we're looking at the topic, Enable Others to Act. Now, what we're talking about today is the idea of helping other people succeed in the areas that they want to succeed in. We're helping to motivate them in the areas that they desire to be motivated in. And so what does it take for us to help other people? Well, it might take mentoring them. It might take just spending time with them. Maybe just being with them, following through with what you say you're going to do. That's going to help them. And so today, we're going to look at the idea of networking through this topic, Enable Others to Act. It's good to be with you. Let's begin our study. Hello and welcome to Leadership Development. Today we're looking at the topic, Enable Others to Act. It's so good to be with you. Let's begin our study. I want to start by talking about sustained interaction with others. We know that companies fail for many reasons. Of course, you have outdated technology, poor management, and maybe even a market crash. Of course, we've seen all of these things play a toll, um, really hurt companies in a huge way. Sometimes the product of the company is just outdated, so it's, it no longer works in what the world's uh, doing today. Then also just have you, you have poor management. In other words, people don't know how to manage the company or it's being managed poorly and those companies just fall apart. And then if you think about the stock market crashes or the housing market crash or whatever, you see that people run out of money and they can't sustain companies any longer. And because of that, you have all kinds of problems. But significant relationships should be desired and valued. So regardless what happens in the world, regardless what happens in companies, it's important to try to sustain interactions with others. There can be many reasons why companies fail. I, I think if you look at some of the great um, CEOs of today, they have all been a part of companies that have failed, but they're great CEOs. And so... Um, to have a connection with those people is very, very important because of what they can bring. I've thought about this with the church world as well. I have a dear friend who is a, a minister in Toronto and is doing an outstanding job. He, he and his church have this whole push. They're going to start I think it's 12 new churches within 10 years, and they're looking at this incredible model to launch, and they've, they're have they already at four churches, and they've only been together for a few years now. And so God is really working through him now. But if you would have seen him at his previous church, was which was a church down in Mississippi, he struggled there. He did not do well. But when he got into a different atmosphere, he flourished. So you can't just focus on a person's track record necessarily or their past because maybe in the past the environment was not good for them and so they had to get into a different environment and then they could flourish. This is important to look at it that way. Also, great networking is helpful in creating lifelong friendships. When you have somebody that is good with connecting with others, a lot of opportunities will come up for them and not just that but great friendships, learning friendships, being with other people. Also, understanding human networking. Networking has become a major aspect in the world today. Websites have popped up to get you linked in, no pun intended there, but to get you involved in the lives of other people, to get you um, surrounded by the people that are like you or they, they enjoy the same types of things that you enjoy. Maybe they're just in the same field. Networking has value, value that goes beyond anything monetary. And so Kuzis and Posner is saying there that money is great, but money cannot buy friendships like you need in networking. It can't just buy that. People don't want to be bought. They want more than that. They want a real, genuine um, friendship with one another. Have you ever heard the phrase, it's a small world? Now think about that. Oftentimes when you hear someone say, it's a small world, it's not a ride at Disney World, it's normally referring to a connection that you're making with a recent acquaintance about something that you're both involved with. So maybe it's a, a person that you both know. And so people are instantly connected this way. It's funny, I've been 
across the world sometimes traveling, things like that, and seeing somebody I know, and then I make a connection with somebody that they know over there. And so it's it's so exciting to think about how we are connected. Now, something a little bit more humorous, I guess, six degrees of separation. Have you ever heard of this? Six degrees of Kevin Bacon uses the six degrees of separation concept, which details the theory that any two people on earth are six or fewer acquaintances apart, in this case, from actor, musician, Kevin Bacon. And so if you've ever heard of this before, it's really funny that Kevin Bacon is connected, connected to everybody and therefore everybody's connected right? There's six degrees of separation with anyone. So it's kind of funny when you think about all the people, of course, he's connected with in Hollywood, and then how are we connected to him too? And so it's just this idea of that you know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that, knows somebody that is connected to an, a certain person. And so um, that might be the president of the United States. That might be somebody that's um, in another country, but you're connected in some way or another. Something uh, fun to look at. Also, when we think about the idea of enable others to act, understanding human networking this way. The value of networking gives you word of mouth referrals. Also, with the value of networking strengthens creativity and innovation. The next thing connects you with mentors. So when you network, not only um, are you getting word of mouth referrals, you are strengthening creativity, innovation, connect, connecting with other mentors, you're building your own brand, and then boosting your confidence. I get extremely um, positive and maybe confident when I think about people knowing my connection in a certain area. And it's always fun. I love to see people's eyes light up when I am talking to one person and another person comes up to me and I say, man, have you met this guy? This guy is, and I go through their kind of their resume and I explain who it is and their eyes just light up because they're getting this uh, connection with a new person that might be able to help them maybe in ministry or maybe with their nonprofit or maybe with the company that they're starting, whatever it might be. There's a boost of confidence that comes with networking. So there's a lot of things. And, and this is just a few things, of course, or uh, a list of things there. But it, there's probably a hundred reasons why networking is so great for everyone. And so important for you to look at there. An article is written in Forbes by Andrew Vest, How to Network the Right Way. And he gives us um, some things here that are helpful. Start networking before you need it. So start getting to know people, um, even if you don't know why you need to know them. Meet people in a coffee shop. Meet people that are in a certain um, area that you like. Maybe it's a hobby or maybe it's work-related. Whatever it is, start networking before you need it. Get to know people. Take people to lunch. Take people to grab a coffee, something like that. It's important for you to get to know people. Come, Get out of your comfort zone and go do that. Have a plan. Have a way of meeting people. Let's say you want to get to know a certain person that's in the field that you really like and you study it and you're trying to get better at it and you're whatever, whatever's going on there. Have a plan to do that. Have a plan in your networking. Also, forget your personal agenda. Sometimes we um, have a plan, right? And the plan is to get to know people. And how are we going to do that? Am I going to sit down with, let's say, five new people per week that I just don't know, but I want to sit down with them? Um, whatever that might be. If you're going to do networking the right way, too, though, on the other side of that, you can't, you, you've got to forget the personal agenda sometimes. So sometimes our personal agenda is I want to get to know this person so they can get me a job. That's the personal agenda. But let's take that and just get rid of that mindset and say, no, what is this person? What can I learn from this person? Not what are they going to give me, but what can I learn from them? How can I help them? And when you go into it that way, it takes out the personal agenda. You're not going into it with a selfish ambition or you're not going to into it with selfishness of saying, I'm going to get something from this guy because he has this or he has that or he knows everybody. Just forget all that. Instead, how can I help them? How can I be a part of their lives? 
How can I develop a friendship with them? That's very important. Number four, never dismiss anyone as unimportant. I have a lot of funny stories about things like this. Uh, I've met people and, and talked to them for a long time on an airplane, and then I didn't even know who they were and how connected I really was to them until we got off the airplane and then to know I was working with them later on. It's so interesting. Um, I actually met one of my bosses getting off an airplane, getting inside a, um, a shuttle, going to a hotel, and I'm talking with one person that's kind of across from me that I didn't know, and I'm telling him about the, about the conference I'm going to and how I'm going to be so involved and how I'm working there. And, and so I didn't know, but behind me was my actual boss for the entire conference, for the whole week. And so he was watching me and really evaluating me, if you, if you could say that, and I didn't even know who he was. Now, if I would have just dismissed him, like, get out of my way. These are my bads. I just got to get my stuff, you know, or treated him like garbage or was not polite to the people around me. It would have made a great impact or a huge impact um, on my experience for that week. And I probably would have been reprimanded and, of course, um, disciplined in whatever way that he would deem necessary. But so what I'm saying there is never dismiss anyone as unimportant. Number five, connect the dots. Try to find ways to connect with people. It'll be very meaningful. Number six, figure out how you can be successful. So figure out how you can do it. You might be more of an introvert, and so things may not be as easy for you just walking up to somebody. But you can figure out a way to be useful in the lives of other people and to help them and to be a part of their lives. And so think about ways that you can offer somebody. What does that look like? You know, what are things that come naturally to you that you could say, you know, I can get out there and do this. I can help them with that. May not be something they think of, may not be something that they're looking for, but you can see their need for it and you can be useful to them. Number seven, follow up and follow through. So when you talk about getting together, follow up with somebody. Make sure that you touch base with them. If you're going to try to, if you say you're going to do something with them, make sure that you follow through with that, all that type of, all those types of things. Number eight, believe in the power of networking. Understand that it's a powerful tool in the tool bag and make sure you get out there and do it. Um, and that's just important. Now, the next thing is connect others to resources of power. I don't know if you've ever heard this phrase before, but if you want to be successful, make everyone around you successful. Now, I was told that by a mentor of mine, and, and he treated it like it was just a, a phrase that was out there that everybody knew, but I didn't know it. But when he told it to me, it made all the sense in the world. If I want to be successful in whatever I'm doing, make everyone else around me successful as well. Have you ever heard this phrase? It's not what you know, it's who you know. This phrase has become vital for the leaders of today and tomorrow. People need one another for ideas and innovation. I like what Kuzis and Posner says uh, about this. They say the new currency of the Internet age is simply intellectual capital. It's social capital, the collective value of the people. Now, it's important for us to think about this idea of the new currency. It's social capital. It's who we know. How well do we know them? Are we involved? Are we working together? Are we creating new ideas? Are we innovative? By being in the lives of other people, you're going to be stronger. You're going to learn more. You're also uh, going to help others develop in that same way. And so it's important for us to connect, to connect others to sources of power. I love this quote. Great leaders love to see people grow. The day you are afraid of them being better than you is the day that you fail as a leader. We need to have the heart of a mentor, a person that wants to see other people grow and succeed. We don't need to be afraid of other people becoming more well-known than us or becoming better in a certain area than us. There's so much competition out there, obviously, but we need to help others succeed. We might be behind the scenes, but if you look at the things that you touch in life, are they taking off? Are they becoming very successful? If they are, then you're doing a great job as a leader. Share information and resources. Sharing your contacts helps others network. Sharing information and resources 
with one another will do these things. Deep and significant relationships equips people with the right items to succeed and helps people steer clear of mistakes while setting them up for success. It's important for people to share information and resources with one another. We need to be in this thing together. Now, one of the great ways to teach this is, is based on team building exercises, activities, things like that. I think one of my favorite team building activities that I've ever done is whitewater rafting. Um, and it's so fun because usually you have a leader in the boat who's in the back of the boat. He's telling people what to do. He's telling people how to, when to paddle, how fast to paddle, He's kind of steering the boat. She's kind of steering the boat and leading them through the rapids to get them safely to the end. And it's so fun because when you work together, you can get through a difficult area in a course. You can get through difficult rapids. You can do all kinds of things. And you're having a lot of fun while you're doing it, right? And so great team building activity there. And it's going to deepen those relationships. It's going to help understand. Uh, people are going to understand what they need to do. And um, also help people steer clear of mistakes, right? And so you learn a lot from those team building activities. I just encourage you to be part of something like that if you can. The next um, quote that I'd like to give is leadership is the activity of influencing people to cooperate towards some goal, which they come to find desirable, which motivates them over the long haul. So when we're helping other people and we're leading other people, we're also influencing them. But what they're doing is learning how to do better and, and get better in, a, in some area that they enjoy, that's desirable to them, and it's motivating to them. And so as we seek to be great leaders, what we're going to do is help other people accomplish their desires. And that's going to go well for them, and it's going to go well for you as a mentor and as a leader. Develop social awareness and social skills. Emotional intelligence. The ability to manage your, ourselves and our relationships effectively consists of four fundamental capabilities. And you see this from Daniel Goleman. He said self-awareness. Number two, self-management. Number three, social awareness. And number four, social skills. He talks about these um, as being so vital to us developing social awareness and social skills. We got to know ourselves first off. We got to know who we are, the best of our ability. There are certain areas that we can't fully know about ourselves. It's almost like they're hidden. If you ever heard the, um, the concept of Jahari's window before, there's this hidden aspect of us that we don't fully know. Maybe we don't even know what we're communicating, but it's still coming out because uh, it's a facial expression. It's, it's something that we're not thinking. How many times do we say um in a sense and we don't even realize it, right? And so it's the idea there of knowing yourself, knowing what you produce, knowing how you speak, um, and knowing those different uh, areas of your life. All right, number two, that self-management, managing your thoughts and actions. So how do you think and how do you live that out? Then number three, managing your relationships. It's important for us to know, are we doing a good job in managing our relationships? Are we following through? Are we following up with people? Are we doing those things? And then developing interpersonal skills. That is very important uh, when we're thinking about emotional intelligence. Now, I wanted to give you this. I thought this was a great article. Habits that will noticeably improve your social skills. So let me give you some of those. Listen to people. Number two, be interested in people's stories. Number three, do you function better in one-on-one -on -one conversations or in a large crowd? So look at that. Number four, don't be too negative or ironic and don't complain all the time. So how are you going to better your social skills? Well, here's four ways of doing that. Let me give you some more. Remember people's names. This is one of the best skills that you can develop is to learn to remember people's names. Come up with a system for that. There's all kinds of ways to do that. You can go on YouTube, you can Google that and help you find out ways to do that. Number six, remember people's stories. One of the best things you can do is, is relate to people through their stories. I remember when you said this and they're like, you remember that? Yeah, of course, man, that was meaningful. That's important for people to hear that. Number seven, don't fill every gap with talking. Don't wait for them to pause for a second so you can get in a word. No, listen for them. Listen. 
Don't get caught up in what you have to say. Follow up. Know when to leave. Don't stay too long. We need to know when it's time to exit. What does that mean? Well, it, it means that um, if you stay too long, people will stop hanging out with you. They'll, they'll think of you as a person who just doesn't leave. You don't see that there's an end of the thought or the end of the conversation. You just keep hanging out and people will, they will pull away from you. So you need to know when to leave. And then number 10, it's all about love, right? The Bible talks about this so much that everything that we do, 1 Corinthians 13, it should be done in love. And if it's not, well, you're nothing more than a clanging symbol. All right, well, this has been Enable Others to Act. It's so good to be with you. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. All right, that concludes our study for today about Enable Others to Act. As you can see, it is vital for us to help other people in this journey. Now, the Bible talks about us um, bearing one another's burdens. It also talks about us cheering for those or celebrating with those who've had good things happen in their life and to mourn or grieve with those who have had, uh, who are going through hard times. So whatever it is, we are yoked with other people and we should seek to yoke ourselves with others. So how do we do that? Well, a lot of it's through networking, just getting to know people, spend time with others and getting out there and, and, and making sure that we're growing in this leadership journey as we get to know other people. All right, it's good to be with you today. God bless you. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.